Good day everyone, welcome back to my channel. We are diving deep into the world of renewable energy and building our own off-grid solar power system. This will be a long video tutorial, so make yourself comfortable and do not rush. Why go off-grid? Reduce reliance on the grid. Gain independence from rising electricity costs and power outages. Environmental benefits. Reduce your carbon footprint and support sustainable living. Live remotely. Power your cabin, RV, or any off-grid property. System Components In order to build a basic off-grid solar system, you will need the following components. 1. Solar Panel 2. Charge Controller 3. Battery 4. Inverter 5. Balance of System Cable Breaker Meter Fuses and MC4 Connectors in this instructable, I will guide you step by step on how to choose the appropriate components of your off-grid solar system and then guide you on how to connect and set them up properly. Solar panel, charge controller, battery, inverter, remote meter, Wi-Fi adapter, temperature sensor, DC breaker, AC breaker, DC bus bar, fuse box, DIN rail, cables, MC4 connector, terminal lugs, and cable tie. Tools required 1. Wire stripper, 2nd crimping tool. Dritter plier, 4. Screwdriver, 5th MC, 4. 6th spanners. Step 1. How it works. The off-grid solar system means you are not connected in any way to the utility grid. The system utilizes batteries to store energy produced from solar panels. Solar panel. The solar panel converts sunlight into electricity. Photovoltaic cells on the solar panel absorb the sun's energy and convert it to DC electricity. Charge controller. The current from the solar panel feeds into a charge controller, which controls how much current goes to a battery. Charge controllers prevent batteries from being overcharged and overdischarged. Battery. It stores energy generated from the solar panel during the day. Inverter. It converts the DC direct current power from the battery bank or solar panels to AC, alternating current, so that you can run your AC appliances, such as TV fan, fridge, water pump, etc. Step 2. Basic Electricity Rules Ohm's Law Relationship Current I equals Voltage V divide by Resistance R It is easier to remember the Ohm's Law Relationship by using the picture Ohm's Triangle. By knowing any two values of the voltage, current or resistance quantities, we can use Ohm's Law to find the third missing value. Voltage V V volts equals I amps times R ohms Current I I amps equals V volts divided by R ohms. Resistance R R ohms equals V volts divided by I amps. Power watt equals voltage, volt times current amp energy, watt hours equals power watts times time hours. Capacity equals current amperes and time hours. Step 3. Six steps of DIY off-grid solar. Figuring out your daily energy consumption. Watt hours is the first step for designing an off-grid solar system. Energy consumption watt hours equals power watts times time hours. You can get the power rating from the power label nameplate of the appliance or you can measure the actual power consumption by using a watt meter. Manual calculation. If you're running a 2 nose of 6 watt LED bulb for 5 hours a day, 1 NOAA fan 80 watt for 4 hours, 1 number of laptop 65 watt for 3 hours, and a Wi-Fi router 6 watt for 24 hours. First, LED bulb 2 times 6 watt times 5 hours equals 60 watt. Our second LED TV 1 times 65 watt times 3 hours equals 195 watt hour 3. Ceiling fan 1 times 80 watt times 4 hours. Those 320 watt hour 4. Wi-Fi router 1x6 watt x 24 hours. 144 watt hour total power consumption teat 719 watt hour you can calculate the energy consumption manually as shown above or use an online calculator step 5 select the battery the battery is used to store the energy produced by the solar panel during the day it is an essential part of an off-grid solar system and provide a constant source of stable and reliable power that allows to power devices when the sun is down the cost of the battery is contributing a large portion of the entire project cost. Here we will discuss in detail so that you can select the right battery for your off-grid solar installation. Batteries are categorized according to 1. Application and Construction 2. Chemistry 1. Applications Automotive and Deep Cycle 2. 
chemistry, lead acid, lithium and NICD. Automotive battery. This type of battery is designed to provide a very large amount of current for a short period of time. This surge of current is needed to turn the engine over during starting. Therefore, lots of thin plates are employed to achieve maximum surface area and as a result, higher starting current in starting batteries. Application Automobiles, car and bike Deep cycle battery A deep cycle battery is designed to provide a steady amount of current over a long period of time. This type of battery is also designed to be deeply discharged over and over again. To accomplish this, a deep cycle battery uses thicker plates. This will lead to lower surfaces and accordingly less instant power, unlike the starting batteries. Step 6. Lead Acid Battery vs. Lithium Ion Battery Two of the most common battery chemistry types are lithium ion and lead acid. Apart from these, NiCD is also used for the renewable application, but here I will discuss only the first two. Lead acid batteries are made with lead, while lithium batteries are made with the metal lithium. Lithium and lead acid batteries can both store energy effectively, but each has unique advantages and drawbacks. 1. Lead acid battery. The lead acid battery is a tried and true technology that costs less but requires regular maintenance and doesn't last as long. Flooded lead acid, FLA. These types of batteries are submerged in water. These must be checked regularly and refilled every one to three months to keep them working properly. It also needs to be installed in a ventilated place to allow battery gases to escape. Sealed lead acid, SLA. SLA batteries come in two types, AGM, absorbent glass mat, and gel, which have many similar properties. They require little to no maintenance and are spill-proof. The key difference in AGM versus gel batteries is that gel batteries tend to have lower charge rates and output. Gel batteries generally can't handle as much charge current, which means they take longer to recharge and output less power. 2. Lithium battery Lithium is a premium battery technology with a longer lifespan and higher efficiency, but you'll pay more money for the boost in performance. The lithium batteries that are employed in solar systems are lithium ion phosphate, LIFEPO4, which have great thermal stability, high current ratings, and a long life cycle. This new technology lasts longer and can be put through deeper cycles. They also require no maintenance or venting, unlike lead acid batteries. The main downside for lithium batteries is their higher price compared to lead acid batteries at the moment. Which battery should you choose? If you need a battery backup system, both lead acid and lithium ion batteries can be effective options. However, it's usually the right decision to install a lithium ion battery given the many advantages of the technology. Longer lifetime, higher efficiencies, and higher energy density. If you're planning to live off the grid full time, you should go with flooded lead acid if you don't mind regular maintenance or the premium lithium option for heavy use. If you want to install the solar in a small cabin or a vacation home, you'll only be there a few times a year. In this case, you won't be able to provide the regular maintenance which is required for flooded lead acid batteries. Then, I will recommend spending some extra amount to buy a sealed lead acid battery instead. Step 7. Factors determine the battery bank size. The following factors determine the battery bank size. 1. Daily power consumption. Second system voltage, 12 volts slash 24 volts slash 48 volts. 3. Depth of discharge, DOD. In the previous step, we have already calculated the daily power consumption. In the next few steps, we will learn more details above factors. Step 8. System voltage. A battery is recognized with its voltage, EV, and capacity measured by amp hours, AH. To provide the desired system voltage, one can wire the batteries in series and parallel. Series connection. Connecting batteries in series add the voltage of the two batteries, but it keeps the same amperage rating, also known as amp hours. Example, connecting two 12 volts 100 amp hour batteries in series will produce 24 volts, but the total capacity remains the same, 100 amp hours. Parallel connection. Parallel connections will increase your current rating, amp hours, but the voltage will stay the same. It's important to note that because the amperage of the batteries increased, you may need a heavier duty cable to keep the cables from burning out. Example, connecting two 12 volts 100 amp hour batteries in parallel will produce 12 volts, but the total capacity will be increased to 200 amp hours. Step 9. 
Depth of discharge. The battery's depth of discharge, DOTs, is the percentage of the battery capacity that can be safely drained without damaging the battery. As you can see in the figure, the more a battery is allowed to discharge, the shorter its lifespan. Deep cycle batteries are designed to discharge 80% of their capacity but are recommended to choose a value of around 50% as a good trade-off between longevity, cost. For a deep cycle battery, 50% and for a lithium battery, 80%. DOD is considered as good practice. Step 10. Battery Sizing Battery capacity, ampere hours, equals daily energy consumption, watt hours, divided by system voltage x, depth of discharge. Example, daily energy consumption equals 719 watt hours, calculated in the earlier step. System voltage equals 12 volts. DOD equals 50% for flooded lead acid battery. Battery capacity equals 719 watt hours divided by open parenthesis. 12 volts times 0.5 close parenthesis equals 119.8 amp hours. You have to select a battery with a capacity of more than 119.8 amp hours. The nearest value available in the market is 120 amp hours. Battery selected 12 volts slash 120 amp hours. I have purchased 150 amp hours by considering future expansion.